Hi friends, if you are new here, my name is Chigozi Brahma and I do chemistry tutorials. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those bell notifications so that you don't miss any of these notifications. In the previous video, we had a look at diamond, its properties, structure and uses. So basically today we are going to look at its counterpart, graphite. What exactly is graphite? Like diamond, graphite is basically an element of carbon in a different form. It's grayish and opaque, just like you can see in this image. This is how it appears naturally. It's extracted from the ground, however, it takes years to be formed. It's China, which has the highest sources of graphite in the meantime. When you look at graphite, it is actually a nonmetal because it's made up of carbon atoms. However, we shall see one of its property that makes it behave like a metal. When you look at graphite being made up of carbon atoms, if it's burnt in air, you realize that carbon dioxide gas will be formed if at all air is in excess. Comparing graphite and diamond, we shall realize that graphite is a much more stable form of carbon at standard conditions. Because graphite is favored by high pressures and high temperatures, at these standard conditions, we shall see always diamond will be tending to convert to graphite. However, the process takes millions of years. So at these normal standard conditions, graphite is a much stable form of carbon than diamond. Looking at the structure of graphite, we are going to start with the area view of a given layer of graphite. When you look at this given layer of graphite, we shall realize that we have black spheres that represent the carbon atoms, and we have these fine lines that represent the covalent bond. When you look at a covalent bond, it's basically sharing of two electrons. So when you look at how these carbon atoms are arranged in graphite, you realize that they are forming a six-sided figure. That's why we say it forms a layer of hexagonal rings. But what's interesting in graphite is that we are going to see that each carbon atom is actually bonded to three other carbon atoms, unlike diamond where we saw that each carbon atom was bonded to four other carbon atoms. Let's have a look at this carbon atom in red. When you look at this carbon atom in red, you realize that this carbon atom is going to be bonded to three other carbon atoms. Let us have a look at the three other carbon atoms. As you can see, this carbon atom is bonded to one, two, three. These are the three other carbon atoms to which this red carbon atom is bonded. All other carbon atoms are bonded in the same way to three other carbon atoms. We shall see how this affects the property of graphite and enabling it to conduct electricity. So in, in that previous slide, you have seen an aerial view of a single layer of graphite atoms. However, graphite is made up of many layers. In this image, we are seeing five layers of graphite. Parallel layers are arranged in order, one after the other. So when you look at the dotted lines, the dotted lines will show weak forces of attraction that keep layers together, as we shall see later on. So because the upper layer and the lower layer are somehow being held by weak forces of attraction, if you apply pressure on one layer, it will always be able to slide over one another. That's why graphite can be used in pencils. And because there is space between spacing between one layer and another, we shall realize that actually graphite is soft and it has a lower density as compared to, to diamond. So basically this is the st structure of graphite. It's made up of layers that are arranged parallel to one another. Let us see why diamond is, sorry, graphite is able to conduct electricity. We shall start with the, this carbon atom in the center. This carbon atom has the black electrons, the black dotted electrons for the carbon atom in the center. Then the other three carbon atoms, their electrons are cross-shaped electrons. So you realize that this one carbon atom that we are emphasizing on right now has three carbon atoms attached to it, just like we had seen in the structure of graphite. However, in the process of covalently bonding to three other carbon atoms, always one electron as being shown here, it's being circled by a red circle. 
it is always free and it's not used in bonding. So usually this ele electron becomes free, stroke delocalized, and it's what conducts electricity. Each carbon atom in graphite will always have this free delocalized electron. So it's what will always conduct electricity. That's why graphite, however, even if it's a non-metal, it will be able to conduct electricity. It's also a good heat conductor, just like diamond. So here we have a general view of how graphite will look like. It's made up of layers. Here we have two layers, the upper layer and lower layer. Atoms bonded by covalent bonding, strong covalent bonds. That's why graphite will also have high melting and boiling points. We see the carbon atoms in each layer bonded through covalent bonds. However, between layers, we have weak van der Waals forces of attraction after the person who discovered them, known as van der Waal. So let us have a look at some of the common uses of graphite. Obviously, graphite got its name from a Greek word called graphene, which meant writing. So it's because graphite primary use initially was for making pencils, that's how it got its name. So it's, made, it's used for making colors of our pencils because it's, it's a bit black, it is soft, and layers can slide over one another. When you look at this, the making of pencils, usually they'll have to mix graphite with clay and water to make these pencil lids or pencil nibs. So the more clay they put in, the harder the pencil nib will be. So basically, this is one of the primary aim of graphite. We also have artificial graphite. You can check it out from other sources. Secondly, it's used as a lubricant. We said it's a bit soft when touched and slippery when touched. You realize that graphite having a high melting point, in some cases, it's good to be used as a lubricant better than liquids. However, we can also add it in some oils or petroleum products to, to make grease for, for lubrication. But for cases where they don't want to use liquid or where they want to use a dry lubricant, graphite powder can be a good thing to use. So as you can see these images for making oils and also can be used to smoothen or reduce friction between a key and a lock. So in this case here in the second image, we have graphite powder. And lastly, graphite, because it conducts electricity, can be used in carbon electrodes, or basically electrodes, stroke in electrolysis. Electrolysis basically is all about passing electricity through what we call an electrolyte. So because graphite conducts electricity, as you can see here, we have a graphite rod that was removed from a dry cell. So usually the center of dry cells, it's always made up of graphite rods. Here we have waste graphite electrodes that, that we are found in China. Probably these were from big power plants. As you can see, they are big rods and probably their use had expired. Then lastly, in terms of electrodes in the laboratories, we usually use graphite as a cathode or anode stroke electrodes because it conducts electricity. So electrodes are basically substances that will always connect the wire to the solution when conducting electricity. As we have, as we can see here, we have the graphite cathode. It's connected to the battery, and then it links the wire to the solution, the molten zinc chloride solution. So because it conducts electricity and it's generally unreactive, that's why it's a good conductor, and that's why it's used in electricity. Yes, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell notification so that you are always notified whenever I upload a new video. Yes, thank you.